Alright guys, today we're going to be disassembling, assembling, and reviewing the Remington 700. Feel free to hit the pause button throughout this video. Alright, let's go ahead and clear this firearm. All clear. I'll be using this vice to free up my hands. Also, this scribe to point out different parts. Here are most of the tools you'll need to disassemble this rifle. Alright, the first step in disassembly is to remove the bolt. Go ahead and get this bolt rack back. To press the bolt stop release and back out the bolt rearward out of the receiver. Next, we're going to be removing the stock. Start with the rear guard, center guard, and front guard screws. Make sure you're using the correct tapered bits while unscrewing these screws. Go ahead and remove the trigger guard. Once all the guard screws are removed, the stock is ready to be removed as well. Remove the screw in the middle of the grip cap to remove the grip cap. If you are just cleaning your rifle today, it's probably not necessary to remove your grip cap. It's mainly for guys just doing stock work. Next, we're going to be removing the recoil pad, starting with the recoil pad screws. Use soapy water or KY jelly to lube up your screwdriver. The reason for this is to not destroy the recoil pad while inserting the drill bit. You want the holes to be as hidden as possible. Before switching holes, you're going to want to re-lube the bit. I'm going back and forth between each recoil screw because I don't want to back out the screws completely out of the back of the recoil pad. Now I can safely remove the recoil pad with the recoil screw still inside. Next we're going to be removing the magazine follower and spring. To remove the magazine from the receiver, you're going to want to remove the magazine screw. Once the screw is removed, grab the magazine and lift up. Next we're going to be removing the trigger housing assembly. But there's going to be a few steps before we do that. Starting with the bolt stop pin and then the sear pin. Use the correct size punch to knock out the bolt stop pin. Leave the punch in the hole and then go to the other side. You're going to want to put pressure on the bolt stop spring while removing the punch. Once the punch is removed, you can go ahead and remove the bolt stop spring. And then the bolt stop. Next, we'll be removing the sear pin. This is the only way the bolt stop pin and the sear pin should be driven into the receiver, is on this side. Go ahead and remove the trigger housing assembly. If you have the old style Remington 700, you can disassemble most of the trigger. Start with the sear safety cam and then the sear spring. Next we're going to be removing the sear snap washer. Be cautious while removing. The safety detent spring and ball are underneath it. The ball is going to be right underneath my scribe. Use your free hand to put pressure downward on the safety snap washer. Once removed, Remove the safety detent spring and then the safety detent ball. Now go ahead and flip the trigger housing assembly over. Hold the safety pivot pin in place. Remove the safety pivot pin, then the bolt stop release. After that, the safety assembly. I recommend using a vise here. Next, we're going to be removing the trigger pin. 
the trigger should be able to slide downward out of the trigger housing assembly along with the trigger connector. The rest of these are staked in. I recommend not messing with them. All right, we're gonna move on to the bolt next. We're gonna set the end of this caulking piece into the vise and then use a dime to slide in the side of the caulking piece. There is a tool to remove this. It's called a bolt disassembly tool, but this is an easier way around it. Slide the dime in the side of the caulking piece and release the bolt. Now we'll go ahead and remove the bolt assembly by unscrewing it. I will be using a second bolt disassembly tool next. I recommend buying one of these tools, but if you don't have it, you can go ahead and clean your rifle as is. Slide the bolt disassembly tool onto the firing pin assembly and start screwing it on. Once you have it screwed on, go ahead and start tightening the end of the bolt disassembly tool. Keep tightening it until it compresses the mainspring and releases the dime and then tighten it some more. You want to keep tightening it until it exposes the firing pin cross pin. You're going to want to drive out this cross pin. I recommend using a magnetic tray to catch the cross pin. When driving out this cross pin, remember which side it came in and out of and remember to place it through that same side. Go ahead and remove the caulking piece, exposing the firing pin. Alright guys, next you're going to be playing a back and forth game. You're going to want to back off the bolt disassembly tool, as well as the bolt plug. Without actually removing either, until you've completely taken the tension off the mainspring. If you don't back off either side, you're going to have a lot of pressure when taking off one or the other. When you've decided there's enough pressure off the mainspring, go ahead and remove it. Be careful because there still will be some slight pressure. Disassemble the rest of the firing pin assembly. Next we're going to be removing the ejector from the bolt face. You're going to want to use a punch and drive out the ejector pin in the side of the bolt. A vise and a magnetic tray is highly recommended here. Once you've punched out the pin completely, leave the punch intact. You're going to want to use your free hand to put pressure on the ejector before removing the punch. And then slowly back off. Once you've pulled the ejector out, don't forget about the ejector spring. Alright guys, we have a completely disassembled rifle. We're going to jump into the assembly and then the review. We're going to start with the ejector spring and then the ejector. Make sure you place the ejector in the hole in a way which it aligns with the ejector pin. I'm going to use a slave punch here to hold the ejector in place. With the slave pin holding the ejector in place, I can punch the ejector pin through the ejector hole with no problem. Let's try a little test run here. Place the bolt disassembly tool in the vise. Install the bolt plug into the bolt disassembly tool. Only go about two or three threads. Install the firing pin assembly and then place inside the bolt disassembly tool. Use the handle to compress the mainspring and start screwing it into the end of the bolt disassembly tool. Go back to the bolt plug and screw it in the rest of the way. Now that the bolt plug is screwed in all the way, go ahead and turn the handle until the firing pin assembly protrudes out the other side. You want it to stick out enough to put the caulking piece back on and to slide the cross pin back in. It can be very challenging to put the cross pin back into the firing pin assembly. If it's not wanting to go on one side, go ahead and take it off and try the other. Remember, if you're getting too much resistance, take the caulking piece back off and rotate the firing pin assembly. Make sure the cross pin is flush with the caulking piece. Next, we're gonna start unscrewing the bolt plug and then the tool handle. 
We are trying to relieve as much spring tension as possible before removing the bolt assembly. Do not remove one or the other until both have relieved as much spring tension as possible. Right here on the handle you can tell there's no more spring tension on it. That's perfect. That's what you want so you can remove the bolt assembly without any pressure. Alright, we're going to place the caulking piece back in the vise. Go ahead and screw the bolt assembly back on the firing pin assembly. Two or three threads is fine. Grab the bolt body and slide backwards. With the diamond in the other hand, place inside the notch in the side of the caulking piece and then start screwing the rest of the bolt assembly. Once you've got the bolt assembly all the way screwed on, remove the dime by pulling back on the bolt assembly. Now we want to align the caulking piece with the notch inside of the bolt assembly. Grab the bolt plug and rotate counterclockwise until the caulking piece slides inside the notch inside the bolt assembly. Let's move on to the trigger housing assembly. Start with the trigger connector and the trigger itself. Slide both inside the trigger housing. Place the trigger pin in the trigger hole and then start hammering it back in its place. Hammer it flush on this side and it will protrude out just a little on the other. Now slide the safety assembly back in the trigger housing assembly. Next is going to be the bolt stop release. Make sure that all the holes are aligned. Now place the safety pivot pin back into the trigger housing assembly. Place the safety detent ball and then spring back on the trigger housing assembly. Next we're going to be sliding the safety snap washer back in place. Next we're going to be replacing the sear spring back into the trigger housing assembly. Now slide the sear safety cam back into the trigger housing assembly. Now align the holes on the trigger housing assembly. Next we're going to be replacing the trigger housing assembly back onto the receiver. Use the punch as a slave pin and then place the sear pin back into the receiver. When you start hammering the sear pin back into the receiver, make sure you align it with the back side so that the bolt stop can fit in the receiver. Now that the sear pin is flush with the receiver, place the bolt stop back into the receiver as well as the bolt spring. Use the punch as a slave pin again and put pressure downward on the bolt spring. Once you've got it through the hole, push under and press the sear safety cam, then push the punch the rest of the way through. Place the bolt stop pin back into the receiver and start punching it back into the receiver hole. While punching the bolt stop pin through the hole, make sure it goes through the bolt stop spring and bolt stop itself. Place the magazine back into the receiver. Screw the magazine screw back into the receiver as well to hold it down. Now place the magazine follower and spring back into the magazine. Before we place the stock back on the receiver, we're going to replace the grip cap. Make sure the grip cap is aligned, not upside down. Make sure you've got your soapy water or KY on your Phillips head before placing in your recoil pad. Bounce back and forth between each recoil pad screw. Don't tighten one screw all the way down or the other will protrude out of the hole. Wipe the recoil pad down with a dry rag. Once the recoil pad is dry, use some mineral spirits, dab it on a dry cloth, and wipe the recoil pad down. Try not to get any of the mineral spirits on the stock, but if you do, don't worry, just grab another dry rag and wipe it off.
it's time to replace the stock back onto the receiver. Next, place the trigger guard back on the stock. Place the front guard screw on the stock first. Next will be the rear guard screw. And last will be the center guard screw. You may have to play around with this one to get it back into the receiver. Sometimes that includes loosening the rear guard screw. Disengage the safety to place the bolt back into the receiver. Alright, you've now completed the assembly of this firearm. Now we're going to jump straight into the review. So this happens to be a rifle that I actually built myself, so I take a lot of pride into it. The only thing I started out with is the receiver. I had to shape the stock as well as machine a brand new barrel on there. I decided to chamber my rifle in 7mm08. Once I finished machining the barrel to the receiver, I had to fit the rifle itself to the stock. I decided to leave the blonde stripe on the end of the ebony tip. I thought it looked pretty cool and I wanted to separate myself from everyone else as well. Everything is fit properly and tight to the section. The recoil pad on the stock is fit perfectly to the stock. Try this out on your rifle just by running a ruler across the stock. I spent a lot of time polishing the grip cap. I wanted to make sure there was no pitting in it before I blued it. The cheek rest is probably one of my favorite things on this rifle. It has really nice smooth, sharp, clean edges. I updated from a plastic to a steel trigger guard. As you can see the ebony tip fits flush with the walnut stock. I spent a lot of time polishing the bolt handle as well as around the bolt handle checkering. There was a lot of pitting on this rifle before I blew it. The trigger on these 700s are pretty awesome. They're adjustable and easy to replace as well. I decided to go with the Leopold scope. Here's a close up of the finish on my rifle. The Remington 700 is a great firearm. I've never had any major functioning problems with any of the 700s I've ever worked on. Alright YouTubers, that's it with my review. If you like this video and you want to see more just like it, please subscribe at the Amateur Smith. I try to put as many videos out as I can on a weekly basis. And I've also got plenty more videos just like this one on my channel. I'll see you next time at the Amateur Smith.